A graphene mixer is electrically biased, means uh, we send a DC current through it on the level of just a few microamps. This is one we use a DC current source. Then we have a current meter and a voltage meter. Uh, the, uh, the current goes through the cabling into the cryostat, through the filtering, and then deep down into the 4K uh, platform. So uh, then uh, uh, the computer, a computer uh, records the current and the voltage and shows what we call IV curve, current voltage curve, on the screen. And uh, now, if when we apply some voltage, we observe that the curve moves. The IV curve is nearly linear. Now we will make a little bit larger steps. So that's how the current voltage characteristics uh, looks like. Now we don't have any terahertz uh, light applied to the device. Although as soon as we um, switch it on, you will immediately see the response on the, on the voltage. So um, so now we will apply 91.8. Energy source. It's very powerful. You can see how the the line went to the left, and now if you move the current down, you see a totally different IV curve. So with a constant voltage mode, you will observe the voltage response on a on a voltmeter or other uh, voltage uh, registering device. And if you switch off, it comes back to initial IV curve. As one can see from this IV curve, the larger the uh, bias current, the larger uh, voltage difference is between on and off mode. And that was called the direct detection response. And now we can actually apply. Uh, actually which is much smaller in magnitude uh, 368 gigahertz source so we apply it and we see another IV here in between so that's DC response on the 368 gigahertz source one should mention that the 91 gigahertz source is much more powerful than 360 that's why we see the uh, large difference. Uh, now we would like to demonstrate fundamental mixer, uh, mixing uh, phenomena in the uh, graphene mixer. So in this case, we have two terahertz sources which are nearly on the same frequency. Yeah. So, so from this horn, which is a terahertz antenna, and from this horn, we have two waves emitting at uh, one is at uh, 367.2 gigahertz and another at 368.2 uh, gigahertz. After uh, being mixed in the uh, blended in the beam splitter and uh, mixed in the ter in the graphene mixer, uh, they are, we obtain the intermediate frequencies through this through this cable. So on the screen, we observe a peak, which will disappear if, if, if we switch off one of the sources, for example. And now we can uh, measure the frequency of the peak, which is uh, approximately one, one gigahertz. If you now change uh, the frequency of one of the sources by one uh, uh, megahertz, we will see the same uh, variation of the frequency of the detection signal, which is now we have one megahertz per division, and now the peak moves one division, and one step again, and one step again, each step of one megahertz. And the same will be uh, observed if you change the frequency of the other terahertz source. So we change it by one megahertz, and the peak on the screen makes one, uh, one uh, square step. And another peak, another step, and another step. And now we move three steps, three steps backwards. 
So, um, so we observe here fundamental mixing. So to one source uh, function as a local oscillator, and another source function as a, as a test a generator. And uh, this amplitude uh, depends both on the biasing on the mixer, which means depending on the which DC current goes through the mixer, um, and uh, the mixing signal will also depend on the magnitude of the local oscillator source. So that's um, how the fundamental mixing works in the terahertz mixer.